Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to part four of Hellraiser Bestiary. Now, if you missed part one of this story, you'll find it linked down below, because this continues parts one through 33 of a previous read-through I did here on the channel. Now, this releases every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so please do follow along with me. That being said... Let's dive right into it. 1940. Somewhere between the Mississippi and the Yazoo Rivers. Amen. Forever and ever. The power and the glory. For thine is the kingdom, but deliver us from evil. A man sits playing the guitar. And there he spots on the roadside... A vehicle that comes forward. It parks over his hat. Hey there, young man. What you doing out here at this hour? Everything all right? You ran over my hat, mister. Well, what the hell was it in the middle of the road for? I was waiting for someone, and I don't believe you're him. Who on earth could you be waiting? Oh, oh lordy. I usually sell these for a dollar in Rosedale. Well, I suppose I owe you. If you're looking to raise the devil with an old hat, maybe a new one will get his attention. I don't need the devil to teach me no guitar, mister. I'm here to trade for something else. You know, things didn't work out too well for Robert Johnson. Sure, he played the guitar like nobody's business, but he died a young man with a belly full of fire playing the guitar. Worth all that? What could possibly be worth your young soul, son? Just one more moment with her. To tell her... I love her, my sweet Clara. The man breaks down into tears. Play me something, son. The man, the stranger, says to the man. And he does. He plays something. And we cut to the man walking into a bar. And he sits down. And there he starts to play a song to the crowd. Well, I threw my old hat in the crossroads just round midnight. I'm gonna raise up the devil, mm-hmm, yeah, that's right. Give him my soul so I can see my woman just one last time. Oh, see my woman one last time. And we cut back. He's there in the road. I think I have just the thing for that, the stranger says as the man snaps his guitar string. It's steel, guarded from someone who owed a debt. I can't play worth a damn myself. He chucks a new guitar at the man. He opens the box and we see it. That familiar gold inlay. I've never seen a guitar with 13 strings before. It's, it's beautiful. And that familiar pattern, the pattern of the devil perhaps, of desire, certainly. There's a bone slide in there too. Don't know whose it used to be, but I reckon it's got some mojo on it. You do what you gotta do, son. Wait, wait. You're giving this to me? Why? It belongs to you, Calvin. Always has. The man gets back in his car, and he drives off. And we cut back to the man once more, playing that guitar and singing that song. I didn't see no devil, but I met me an old man. Yes, I did. He gave me this new hat. This shiny 13-string guitar Should have known ain't nothing for free Oh, ain't nothing ever for free 
but he's not really there in a crowd. He's still sat there by the side of the road. And we see him just strumming the guitar. Mm -hmm. I threw my old hat in the crossroads. Gonna call up Satan himself, yeah. Gonna trade my soul, so, so, so I can. He opens his eyes and he sees before him the Cenobites. Y you sure do look like the devil. We are known by many names, child. None which matter. We come to those who call us. And there's always a price to pay for our summons. Well, I am here to offer my soul so I can see my Clara one more time and kiss her lips. My dear lamb, the devil traffics in souls. We demand flesh for our great works. No, 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 no. I'll give you anything. I need to see her. Just once is all I ask. Such things are not beyond our power, but more costly than the meager flesh on your bones. If, if you want more flesh... I can give it to you. Lots of it. And no, no he is. He is indeed back. Playing that guitar for the crowd. We're cutting between timelines here. He is indeed giving the Cenobites more flesh. As he plays that guitar. And he sings that song. I wore my new head. I played my new guitar. I called up new devils you ain't ever heard before. Four fallen angels came a-calling, blew out the moon and the stars started falling. They said, son, you can't keep your soul. We just want what's on your bones. Oh, they just wanted what's on my poor bones. They asked me how much blood would you shed to see your baby again. The hooks and chains are summoned and they pierce the flesh of the dancers. I told them I'd fill old man river till he done run red. For forty days and forty nights he'll run red. I'm hooked on you, baby. You make me do such bad, bad things. Yes, I'm damned for loving you, baby. Jesus won't be making up my dying bed. Oh no, Jesus won't make up my dying bed. And heaven don't want me no more. As a woman's face gets torn in half. Is, is that enough? It's been four days. Four days of turning juke joints into slaughterhouses. There is one final payment to be made, Pinhead says to the man. And as a gesture of goodwill, Pinhead holds his arm out. And from the shadows, Chatterer pulls forth Clara. C C Calvin, she says, confused, concerned. Cla Clara, baby! But she recoils. Keep him away from me, she says. You, you killed me, Calvin. You shot me dead. And I'm glad of it, because you made my life hell with your drinking and your beating and your lies. I know I done you wrong, baby. I'll make it up to you. We'll be together forever, you'll see. And there, with a gesture of his hand towards the guitar, he speaks. Time for your final payment. Embrace, lovers. And there as Calvin pulls her close. Kiss me, baby. Just one last time. Just one last kiss. Clara recoils. No, no, no. But he leans in and she bites his lip. But there the guitar strings wrap around them both. Forcing them together. One last lover's embrace. You will sing for us new songs of pain. And suffering for eternity. And then we're left with a guitar on the floor and a shadow 
walks closer. We know what shadow this is. It's the stranger. Picks up the hat. Should have known ain't nothing for free. Oh, ain't nothing ever for free. As he walks off with a guitar. This is a lament configuration guardian. An eremite of the labyrinth. And we see a load screen. www.hellbounddesires.xxx Hi, I'm Lizzie Lust. And you're watching Hellbound Desires. Tell the folks at home what we'll be doing today. Well, I'm going to get tied up and I'm probably going to get spanked and flogged. You know, bondage and S&M stuff. So, if anything during the scene is too much for you to handle, you have a safe word, of course. Of course. And your safe word is... Red. Very good. Can you please take off your shirt? The girl takes off her shirt and a man speaks from behind the camera. Good. Can you take off your pants and panties, please? Very good. Take a seat. I've got something for you. And the man walks back in and... Here. Take this. He steps back and... We see what's in her hand. It's the puzzle box. Well, what is it? A puzzle box. Solve it. You want me to? Solve it. Uh, okay. She sits there, tinkering away with the lament configuration. Oh, I, I think I got it. Where are you going? I'll be right back. Keep going. You've nearly got it. The figure says as he walks out even further. And we hear the tolling of the bell. What the hell's that? She says, concerned, scared. And there, from the puzzle box, the hooks and chains rip out and tear into her flesh. The woman shouts, Red! 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 And there, from behind a door, Pinhead steps forward. And as he steps forward and looks into the camera, a hook on a chain descends. And the man turns. This man appears to be Sam, the same man who mercilessly slaughtered the harrowers and led Kirsty Cotton down the path to become Pinhead. But now we pick back up where we left off. We see Pinhead on the floor in chains and a man leaning over him, picking at his pins. Or trying to, at the very least. Ugh. Boss. Come on, you piece of shit. Boss. Boss. What? You want me to give it a shot? Fine. He hands him the pliers. The man kneels down, tries to rip out one of the pins. No. No, they won't budge. What now? We keep trying until we get every fucking pin. I refuse to. Boys. A voice cuts in. Why pull the pins out? The woman says, kneeling down and taking one of the Cenobites' own weapons. When we can carve them out, she says. That's my girl. And there, each of the men hold a knife, a various blade, and begin hacking at Pinhead's flesh. Shut up, devil. Can't take a bit of your own medicine. Got you. As he pulls one of the pins out. Almost done now. And then it'll all be over. They pull a few more out as blood keeps running down his face. There, in a pool of his own blood, Pinhead just looks at them. One thirty-six, one thirty-seven, one hundred and thirty-eight pins, one hundred thousand a pin. We just made over thirteen million dollars. Grab the gasoline, let's dispose of this demon so we can go and collect our earnings. The man grabs a petrol canister. What do you think will happen to him when he dies? Who gives a fuck? Fair enough. The woman says as she lights up a cigarette. I doubt you've ever asked your victims this before slaughtering them. But I'm not a beast like you. 
as the man speaks to Pinhead. So I ask you this as a kindness, any last words? And there once more, defiant till the end, Pinhead simply speaks three words. Take your time. <laughs> well, you don't make it very fun, do you? He turns to his girl. I thought you quit. I did. But today is a special occasion, she says, as she flicks the cigarette into the pile of gasoline. And it lights him up. In less than an hour, we'll all be multi-millionaires. They all run off and the leader speaks. I can think of no occasion more special. But one of the group questions. You sure the fire's going to kill it, boss? The cardinal said to cleanse it with fire. Or something fruity like that. These people, you know, they're all theatrics. And there inside we see Pinhead burning, melting. What if fire doesn't work? What if it tries to track us down? So what if it does? Without these, the man says, looking at the pins. He is powerless. And there we see Pinhead once more. Melting, the flesh bubbling on his face. And his arm reaches up. And his bone cracks. As he drags himself through from the fire, he speaks. The irony is not lost on me. The hunter becoming the hunted. This upsets the natural order. The wrong will be made right. As he stumbles into the city. Vatican City. What better place? <laughs>